All right, we have 20 present, one absent. Presentation of the agenda. I have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. Introduction of the new library director. Sure. So Dominic, if you would, oops, sorry. If you would mind, if we have Dominic come up to the front over here, so we can we can properly introduce you. So this is Dominic. He's been with us probably is your third week. It's my third week. Twenty-one days. Good morning. So, <laughs> wait, we just. Uh, I got to change. My, I got two months. I got to work on. Sorry. So normally what we do is a, we have a new department head, we invite them to the meeting, but we give you an opportunity, maybe just give you a, a quick introduction for yourself and maybe just a quick background and oh. nothing really long, but. Okay, so under three minutes. There you go, <laughs> yep. Um, my name is Dominic Grandra. Uh, been a lifelong Wisconsin resident. Um, my most recently from Anago, Wisconsin. Um, before that from Opaca, another sorry, was there. There you go, sorry. Okay, sorry. So my name is Dominic. I'm a lifelong Wisconsin resident, most recently from Anago, Wisconsin, and before that from Wapaka, and before that from Madison, and before that Superior, and before that Prescott. So I've been all up and down the state uh, doing various things, but I've been in the library world ever since I was in high school and got addicted to reading then. And that's what I really like to do is make sure everybody has what they want as far as their research, as far as what they want for recreational reading and all the fun and different services the library has been able to offer in the, oh geez, the 20 some odd years since I've been in the library world. So from pre-internet to internet to post COVID sometime. So I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments, my door is always open. I'd like to um, see with you. I'm always uh, open to, Things that you'd like to see at the library so let me know if there's something you want to see or something we can improve and we'll work on it great okay. thank you very much welcome, welcome. thanks welcome. And correspondence email from christine reed at 6 12 22. any additional correspondence to add supervisors we did have an email correspondence that was, I think, sent out overnight that might be in your inboxes, but we'll note that, I guess, as a part of the next county board meeting just because of the timing. So, but there was a correspondence you did receive. Public comment. Okay. Sure. So for public comment, I'll start with those <clears throat> individuals online or on the phone. If you'd like to speak, uh, you can do so by uh, online by raising your hand and I'll give you the floor. Uh, likewise, if you're on the phone, you can hit star nine. And I can also give you the opportunity to speak. So I will ask twice if there's anyone online who would like to speak. For the second time, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay, showing none. We will now then turn to, I guess, inside here. If there's anyone from the public who would like to speak, if you could please, uh, if you'd like to speak, please stand. Uh, come up to the back left turn. We'll give you the mic. You have three minutes to address the board. Or you'll have to turn on the mic in the back. Sir. Uh, my name is Dennis Halverson and I have property on the Forceville Dam flowage. Um, when we had to draw it on for two years, the anticipation was to have it cleaned up and in a very nice uh, state of condition. Uh, before the drawdown, I was able to go fishing use my boat, go on an afternoon ride and everything was fine, you know? And now there's no way. Uh, the, there's whips and reeds and LJ and just, you can't use a boat, but the motor is gonna be plugged within feet from where you take off. Uh, fishing I know is gonna be down for four years anyhow, because all the fish were removed from the dam. I know they're transplanted now, but they have to grow. Um, in the condition the dam is right now, the flowage, I'm just wondering when or if this is ever going to be cleaned up. As in the condition it is right now, they don't even have the boat ramp in by the park for access for general boats to come in because you can't use them. 
I mean, it's that bad. It's, it was in a lot better condition before the drawdown than what it is now. I've, I've been there since 1990 and I've never seen it in as bad of a condition as it is right now. And uh, in respect to the drawdown, I believe that's what caused this ve vegetation and stuff to thrive. And right now, the, my property is devaluated much more than what it ever has been. Um, and I'm just wondering what the plans are for this. Okay, anything else? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. My name is Christine Reed, 597 Sleepy Hollow Drive. My correspondence is in the agenda packet. However, I don't think that the photographs that were sent with it made it in there. They're certainly available and anyone who is interested at all should go to the Friends of the Forestville Dam Facebook page. There's a wealth of information there. If, if you wanna see the conditions, uh, videoed and, and pictures of it. Um, on September 21st, 2021, I spoke to the board during public comment about the Forceville Mill Pond Drawdown Plan. There's an activity on this plan that says vegetation assessment for, by July 15th and identify preferred control method and then some options. <clears throat> I spoke on September 21st, there was absolutely no response. So I emailed on September 24th and reiterated my concerns and my questions and the fact that I wanted to see the vegetation assessment and the decision on a control method. Um, Mr. Pavich responded on September 30th. He started the response with, have your attorney contact our attorney which you know, pretty much epitomizes what we've been through for going on four years. At any rate, um, I, I did respond to that by saying, I don't believe that I need an attorney to get information that's readily available to the public. So it, there were several back and forths. Uh, at, at one point he addressed my question, what is the recommended method of control for the vegetation that had taken root in that, that uh, flowage during the drawdown. He said, the vegetation will be allowed to live or die off naturally with the water level back up. The, the drawdown finished October 7th of 2021, tremendous relief. We, we walked the flowage for the first time that winter when it was frozen. We were not able to walk the flowage during the winter the, the previous two years. We had no access to the enjoyment of the mill pond other than those occasions when it filled to overflow the top of the dam. Look, I need more than three minutes to, in order to finish this thought. Nobody else is here to speak. Put up to the chair. So, so I'll, when I'll, we walk, I'll, Christine, I'll, I'll allow an additional three minutes. Thank you. When we walked in the winter, there was stubble sticking through the ice, twigs, which we assumed was going to die with the refill. This spring, it has grown to more than six feet above the water, has fanned out into sand bar willow and uh, covered with foliage the front of our property if you did read my comment is obliterated with narrow leaf cattail there's eurasian water mill foil throughout we did manage eventually to get a canoe through the dense junk that's out there and pull samples we know that soil and water had people out there pulling samples of the vegetation to see what it is. So uh, first, you were very excited about getting back out there after the drawdown completed. And early May, 
we put the canoe in, my neighbor and I, and we started to paddle upstream to the island and we're literally completely stuck in vegetation. A lot of it at that time was dead reeds that had mast. Since then, the, the plants that are in there, the woody brush has grown to <coughs> completely obliterate the, the, the place. Why isn't the dock in at boat launch? It was early this spring, a couple of people managed to get their uh, pontoon boats in there, but now it's laying on the shore, probably a liability to anybody that goes out there. Our neighbors won't sit on their deck. They're so distraught about the appearance. They avoid looking out their windows. Today, there would be more people here. You would have heard from other people they literally told us they're afraid of retaliation because that's how this county board operates. If you speak out at, and question anything that they say, they will retaliate. And I can, if I had more than another three minutes, I'd give you some examples of that. And the huge lies that were told from the beginning when this was proposed in December of 2018, when Ken Fisher opened public comment by saying, I'm minute. required to have 30 minutes of, of public comment, but I don't want to hear any whining and complaining. That has been the tone from the county since the day that they proposed it. We're going on four years and we're still trying to get some help and still being treated like we're an annoying the board and county employees. Greg Koldosh does not deserve to be uh, a county conservationist for the Soil and Water Department. And if anybody wants to talk about it, I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy to provide you with written evidence of why that's not a good idea. Same goes for the chairman of the board who lied then the okay, enough. That's, a, that's enough. That. No, it's we, not we, enough. We've already extended enough. So your comment period is over. Instead, he's reelected as chairman of the board. That is the face of the Door County Board. Lying. Any other public comment? It's suicide. There we go. Sue Power, 736 Kentucky Street, Sturgeon Bay. I'm a recent retiree who cares about the community. And I'm here to encourage approval of the remote work policy on your agenda today. The county's in a staffing crisis, especially in the Health and Human Service Department. Um, of course, right now, workforce retention is a challenge all over, but please let's not use that as an excuse to not take responsibility or action within our own county workforce. We learned from COVID how to efficiently, effectively, and safely work remotely. Technology allows us to communicate constantly with coworkers via phone, email, online chat, and video meetings. Job performance and productivity can be monitored remotely. Some of the public health staff members were actually more productive while working from home during COVID because they avoided the usual workplace distractions. Let's please get past the idea that all employees need to be treated exactly the same. The snowplow driver will understand why they can't work from home, just as the public health nurse will understand they can't work from home on the day of a vaccine <coughs> clinic. An increase in wages and benefits are needed to retain staff, along with a culture shift to truly respect employees and allow them to have more of a voice in working conditions. What you can do today will not cost anything, is to approve the policy to allow eligible employees to work up to three days a week from home. Replacing employees is difficult and costly in ways you may not have thought of. Those employees who remain are tapped out from repeatedly orienting new staff, making it more likely they will also exit. 
As a Door County resident, I would very much like there to be capacity in the behavioral health team to assist many folks with mental health concerns and problems with addiction that have escalated during the pandemic. Likewise, I expect the Child Protective Services Division to have capacity to protect our children who are at risk. A well-trained public health workforce with capacity to promote and protect our health and respond to emergencies such as COVID-19 or local outbreaks of communicable diseases is vital. <clears throat> if you imagine that in times of crisis, the state will be boots on the ground help here to assist, I want to be clear, that is not how it works. While the state provides guidance, each jurisdiction is responsible for itself in regards to action in these matters. These workforce concerns affect the health and well being of our community. Please support the retention of our valuable county workforce approving the remote work policy. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Anybody else? All right, we'll close public comment. Is there any supervisor's response? Okay. We're going to move down to special reports for Destination Door County. So I'd like to introduce uh, for those that don't know, Julie Gilbert, who's our new CEO at Destination Door County, and obviously a familiar face, John Jarish, who's been uh, with Destination Door County for few moons. So, but they're here to give us uh, there's a request to get some updates on what they're trying to accomplish. There's been a lot of activity and some milestones that have definitely been achieved this year. So I will turn over the floor. Just give me one second just to put this in the right view and also transfer the sharing of the screen since we have people online. Ken's going to be our Vanna White. Yes. We'll see how he does. The pressure's on. Uh, it is. I'll go ahead and, and start just because we, we want to thank uh, the Door County Board of Supervisors again for passing Proclamation 2022-17 at your March 22nd meeting this year, officially denoting May 1st through the 7th as Travel and Tourism Week in Door County. Destination Door County appreciates the county board recognizing the importance of tourism and the opportunity that this special week provides for enhancing industry awareness with Door County residents. So again, thank you so much. So our organizational roots in Door County date back to March 1884, which is pretty remarkable. I've been here seven months and I look at that and I'm like, wow, that that's really amazing. We were officially founded in April 1891 and are one of the oldest destination organizations in the country. And reflecting our willingness to evolve with the times, Destination Door County is the eighth name of our organization's history. So many people remember us as the Door County Chamber of Commerce, and we held that name from 1924 to 2004 or Door County Visitor Bureau, which was from 2007 to 2019. We have had the name Destination Door County since January of 2020. And while our funding sources and organizational names may have changed over the years, our mission to promote the county and serve our local businesses and work to better our community has remained steadfast for the past 138 years. So we're going to talk a little bit about the tourism zone, which was created in May of 2007, when 10 communities formed the zone, according to the Wisconsin State Statute 66.0615. By the end of 2008, all 19 communities in Door County were a part of that Door County tourism zone. And this was a result of a grassroots efforts by residents called the Door County Peninsula Strategic Marketing Coalition. They fundraised and volunteered their time to raise money for a market study. And the market study showed that Door County needed new revenue sources to create and implement results driven marketing to stop losing that market share. 
Membership dues were just not enough, and for Door County to remain competitive, the only option was to generate money for a cohesive and unified marketing campaign. Room tax revenue provides the mechanism that ensures ongoing funding for the promotion and development of tourism in Door County, and these funds allow Door County to stay in the consideration set of visitors planning cycle. So through 2021, the municipal room tax was 5.5%, and this tax was divided into three different ways. 30% of room tax collections went and still continue to go back to the municipalities of where they were collected. And these funds can be spent for any deemed use deemed necessary by that particular community's municipal body. And then at that time, 66% of collections were distributed to Destination Door County for marketing. These funds were spent on items which qualify as tourism and marketing expenses under our Wisconsin state statute. And 4% was retained by the Door County Tourism Zone for expenses related to cost, distribution, and enforcement of the tax collection. All zone commissioners, again, are still volunteers, but now there is one full-time employee as well as one part-time employee. So here you see the steady increase of lodging tax dollars with a slight dip in 2020 and then that huge increase in 2021. And it's important to note that at year end 2021 from 20, excuse me, from 2007, the tourism zone has collected $60.8 million in room tax, 40.1 million to Destination Door County, and 18.2 million to member municipalities. Beginning January 1st of this year, the municipal room tax rate increased from 5.5% to 8%. And again, 30% of those room tax collections still go back to the municipalities where they were collected. And again, those funds are unrestricted. They can be used on anything that the community's municipal body deems necessary. 70% of those collections are now distributed to Destination Door County, again, for tourism marketing and promotional and management purpose, purposes. Excuse me, again, all following the Wisconsin state statute. And also new this year, the tourism zone's administrative expenses, including the cost of tax collection, distribution and enforcement, are now paid for by the member municipalities. So in May, during National Travel and Tourism Week, we officially signed our new entity agreement with the Tourism Zone. And this new agreement continues to govern our relationship between the two organizations, and it really ushers in a new era of partnership and collaboration. Destination promotion, development, and management are the benefit and well being of all Door County citizens and communities. And by working more closely with the Tourism Zone Commission, we will be ensuring that we expand our perspectives and creating more robust tourism programming. So, the goal of these essential programs will be to enhance the quality of life in Door County by creating additional opportunities that support our local residents who depend on tourism dollars to provide for their families. So you can see a breakdown of how room tax dollars flow through the system in Door County. The lodging properties collect, provide then uh, to the Tourism Zone Commission, and the Zone Commission provides back to the municipalities of that 30% and 70% to Door County unrestricted municipalities restricted to destination door county next slide i'm going to turn this slide over to um, john to review the economic impact of this last year so the economic impact last year as, as anybody driving around last year probably realized was pretty substantial and now we have the numbers to back that up uh, in the packets that we put on your table or in front of you um, you'll find 
uh, two things. Number one is a newspaper insert that we put in the April 29th issue of the Peninsula Pulse. Uh, some great information there about uh, the tourism industry, our organization, room tax, uh, and that was distributed to every mailbox holder in the county. So our goal with that piece was really to get to every resident that is here um, and anybody else that picked up the pulse that particular issue. Uh, but there's some great information in there, which is why we wanted to get it to you. Also in there is this fun little fact sheet. Uh, it's a nice little two pager, easy to digest. And it really does talk about the, the impact of tourism from an economic standpoint last year in 2021. Um, You'll see it was very busy and more money than ever flowed through our economy as a result of tourism. Uh, visitors spent $423 million directly in Door County last year. And when you add in the indirect and induced spending, that total reaches $531 million, so over half a billion dollars uh, as a result of tourism here. Um, some really good stats. I'm not going to go through the whole thing for you because I know uh, we've got, we hired a good librarian director and I know you all can read. So I won't go through that. But one thing I do want to, an interesting fact I want to point out, it's down on the bottom in the did you know section, is that each occupied household in Door County would need to be taxed an additional $3,175 to replace the visitor taxes received by state and local governments last year. So um, but that's just, I think it, it does help to show how it really does impact all of us from a financial standpoint and the tax dollars that the tourism industry brings into our county. Um, if you are interested in a more detailed report, this is two pages, by the way, on the back, you'll see a history of visitor spending, state and local taxes and room tax collections. It's a nice little quick glance. Uh, on the bottom of the front page, you'll see uh, that you uh, a link to download the entire study that we commissioned with a company called Tourism Economics. Uh, if you're interested in a lot more detail, feel free to check that out, uh, and it's available online, and anybody is welcome to see that. So I'll pass it back over to Julie. Thanks, John. So inspired by 30% of these room tax dollars that flow back to our municipalities, again, breaking it out into 18.2 million between 2007 to 2021, some great things have occurred in Door County. And we'd like to show you a short video which shares some of these positive things that have happened. Thanks, Kim. Oh, we just gotta give you a second. This is not the sharing to share the other video. First settled for its natural resources, Door County's raw materials of stone, lumber, and fish were taken from the land and waters and shipped off to the growing new cities of the Midwest and beyond. Our community's natural beauty was being harvested and sent away as raw materials to build other communities. But just as the unsustainable boom of the extractive industry was busting, a new possibility presented itself and in the late 1800s, tourism became a viable economic opportunity. Ever since then, the Door County community has worked to preserve its natural resources and its heritage in order to perpetuate and grow a healthy economy, better the visitor experience, and continue to improve the quality of life for its local residents. The tourism economy has experienced its shares of ups and downs. In 2005, it hit one of its low points and the livelihoods of the local residents were in jeopardy. In an effort to restabilize the tourism economy and rebuild the infrastructure that supported visitors and locals alike, the business community partnered with local governments and started to implement a countywide room tax in 2007. Since then, room tax dollars have been an integral part in the purchase of land and waterfront to expand and enhance access to shorelines and open spaces. Starting with the purchase of Helms Four Seasons Hotel in Sister Bay, other communities have followed suit. And in the years to come, Liberty Grove, Sturgeon Bay, Bailey's Harbor, Fish Creek, Jackson Port, the Village of Egg Harbor, and the County of Door would follow with substantial purchases of their own. In 15 years, local governments have spent more than $26 million on shoreline purchases, opening up 128 acres and 2,700 feet of shoreline frontage to the public. 
Along with these acquisitions come improvements like better accessibility, playgrounds, pavilions, boardwalks, and kayak launches. In that same period of time, thousands of acres of forests, bluffs, wetlands, and open spaces have been added to the public realm, thanks to the efforts of the Door County Land Trust, the Nature Conservancy, and the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. It is these collective investments in Door County that improve the quality of life for residents and the experience for the visitor, which in turn creates more funding to preserve more shorelines and more open space for public use. Prior to 2005, our individual municipalities, business and community associations competed with one another. The economic downturn served as a unifying force and our community leaders discovered common ground. They shared ideas and experiences and began to move forward together. In 2007, the former Door County Chamber of Commerce evolved into the Door County Visitor Bureau, which is now known as Destination Door County, and they became the leading voice for promotion of our community. Over the following 15 years, our business community, local governments, and visitors all have seen growth. All along, the community coordinators have worked together to create a bridge between visitors, local residents, and municipal governments with the goal of improving life for us all. With this growth came significant improvements for the local residents and visitors alike. Improvements like public park additions and expansions in Bailey's Harbor, Sister Bay, and Sturgeon Bay. Sustainability initiatives gained a foothold across the county with communities of Egg Harbor, Ephraim, and Fish Creek acquiring green tier designations as well as electrical vehicle charging stations have become commonplace. Door County communities gain more public waterfront in communities like Bailey's Harbor, Gills Rock, Egg Harbor, Fish Creek, Jacksonport, and Sister Bay than in any other time in our community's history. Playgrounds have been expanded. Dog parks have been added. The infrastructure of the county has been vastly upgraded with improved transportation and walkability in Jacksonport, Fish Creek, Sister Bay, Ephraim, and Sturgeon Bay. In addition, major broadband initiatives are underway, paving the way for the next generation of internet connectivity. Preservation of our culture and history has taken center stage in Sturgeon Bay, Fish Creek, Sister Bay, and Ephraim, as coordinated efforts with their local historical societies have helped preserve irreplaceable historical structures for future generations. Outdoor recreation opportunities in Southern Door have become more accessible year round. Festivals and events such as Death's Door Barbecue on Washington Island have expanded to provide a more diverse offering for visitors as well as residents. Not only have the traditional festivals continued to go strong and bring visitors to us in the shoulder seasons, but the community-focused programming at the Door Community Auditorium and Crest Pavilion have also been added to enrich residents' lives. Overall, these efforts benefit the Door County community as a whole. Balancing the needs of the locals, businesses, and our visitors will continue to be a challenge. How well we all work together, plan, listen, and collaborate will determine what kind of home we will have in the future. Door County is well positioned. The community coordinators, local government, and Destination Door County are all committed to preserving and advancing this community we all love. The future of our community is bright and the best is yet to come. Not too much more. A couple of more slides. Door County developed a interesting maritime tradition uh, because of uh, several. Uh... Lost control for a second. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, and, and speak as he's trying to, um, right. oh, well, there you go. So as a result of the increased percentage of room tax collected, Destination Door County now funds the Municipal Reimbursement Fund. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, you can go to the next slide, Ken. Excuse me. Sure. Municipal Reimbursement Fund, which is to provide financial support to municipalities for tourism-related infrastructure and beautification efforts. 
So dollars from DDC for this program, uh, DDC, Destination Door County, match the amount each municipality pays to fund the Door County Tourism Zone Commission. And the amount is distributed to each municipality based on the percentage that um, of room tax revenue generated. And we also partner and collaborate, as you saw in the video, closely with the community business associations throughout the county. And we've set up the Strategic Community Partnership Program where 19% of the room tax that Destination Door County receives from the Door County Tourism Zone goes towards that particular program. So the goal of the Strategic Community Partnership Program is to help and support the alignment of those individual efforts of our community business associations in the development of tourism programs while enhancing the quality of their visitor experience and supporting the local community and strengthening our in-county communication efforts. And this is being done by working very closely with them on strategic planning, collaboration, funding, education, research, and marketing opportunities. And the last point there is also we are in the process of establishing a tourism infrastructure and investment grant program, which aims to provide funding opportunities for tourism related programs and projects that will help shape the Door County economy in ways that balance its long term sustainability and vibrancy, along with an increase in visitor spending, have a positive impact on the visitor experience, along with a positive economic impact for Door County and enhance the quality of life for our local residents. So as a community shared values organization, we want to support and strengthen the community's economic position, providing opportunity for all of our residents. And we understand that sustainability is essential for us to build value for our residents visitors, stakeholders, and future generations. And we must maintain our community and steward our assets while preserving our brand and continuing to grow our potential. We know tourism helps build community and destination promotion is an essential investment to continue developing those opportunities and building a quality of life um, for all of our residents throughout Door County. The health of our community's overall economy depends upon a strong travel economy and lodging tax has provided our community with so many benefits over the years. We really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you all today and we look forward to becoming more of a resource and partner for the county uh, when it comes to tourism related data and collaboration. Um, Ken is, is on our board of directors and we work very closely with Ken on uh, everything that we do. And I'm not sure if I open it for questions sure. or. Sure. What? Penny? Thank you for the presentation. I'm just wondering if this is the maybe it's on the report that you referenced on the sheet at the bottom. Is there a breakdown of the lodging tax? And I've seen that that was 48.8%. Is it broken down the type of lodging? Is that kind of like detailed information available on there? Or? So in that particular report, no. But that okay. data is available to the mm -hmm. Door County Tourism Zone Commission. Right, OK. Um, and in their annual report that they just did uh, two weeks ago, yeah. um, that you'd be able to find that at doorcountytourismzone.com. Or okay. let me know of any, and I'd be happy to, to get you the link to that presentation. OK. As well. And it's it, available online. Okay. So that is more of the resource for the background of how the room tax works, where the destination or doorcounty.com is more of the visitor interface of yes. coming right. to Door County. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of really good, good data. Uh, yeah. If you're interested in lodging data, <laughs> number of permits, where, the, you know, all sorts of stuff. Door County, the tourism zone is at keeper of all that data. They collect it. So. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Just, thank you. Yep. Oh, there's wait, wait, one more question. Just oh. Alexis, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Very interesting. <clears throat> um, as a local, obviously we're all locals, but um, I, we know that the 
support for the workforce has been a really big issue, housing, broadband, all that. Curious, um, when you talk about bettering the life and the experience of the tourism industry and the workers that support making that available and, and successful as it is, um, how does these dollars, how can these be dollars, how can these dollars be leveraged um, for such things as like the drug and alcohol support, treatment support, childcare, um, housing initiatives, that kind of thing. The things that are actually impacting the workforce and requiring people to work because there's n there's not a lot of people to work. So then they're overworked and overburdened and they can't enjoy all the beautiful things that you just shared. <laughs> well, and I, I think 2021 was um, really a tsunami because no um, J-1 visa uh, workers came in and there was such a huge increase of visitation that it was the pendulum went like this and we're trying to get it back to this and I know we had over 500 students that are coming in for this year for workforce. Um, housing is an issue and I, I know that the Community Foundation is addressing that as well um, and we're working to support organizations that their core competency is to really provide um, those types of child care issues and workforce because it it and and it's something that the whole U.S. is experiencing, um, and it's something that we are very aware of, and we're trying to work very closely with everyone in order to help and support that. So it is on our radar, um, and we're. Um, trying to identify where we can fit in and support, again, based on that state statute. So do, do you have anything else? No, I was just gonna say, we are restricted with those yeah. tax dollars and yeah. how they can be spent based right. on the, the state, state statute. statute. So that's what Julie had indicated. We're trying to figure out how we can be a, be a partner and try to help right. some of these issues as best we can, given our limitations with the dollars that we've got. Yeah, that's a good question though, Alexis, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I greatly appreciate it. Um, just a couple, just one quick comment and one request. Um, kind of the elephant in the room, if you will, is, is the rise of the work by local municipalities to implement short-term rental ordinances. Um, I would like to see how you're going to engage the residents that live here full-time that are you know, starting to also push back, as you can see, about uh, impacts of their quality of life. Uh, secondly, I'd like to applaud the work that you're doing on sustainability. It's important. And what I would do is I would also make sure that you work with your suppliers uh, to engage them. It's great that you're talking about fresh water, but as we learned in our work in creating the Sebastopol uh, short-term rental ordinance and in working with the Town of Liberty Grove, in researching their short-term rental ordinance, there were a large, almost majority of the properties that were operating above their POUTS uh, capacity requirements. Mm -hmm. And that affects not only potential for the consumers that are staying at those short-term rentals, but it impacts the groundwater of the surrounding full-time residents. You know, for the city of Sturgeon Bay, you get your water from, you know, municipal sources and it's filtered, but uh, that all comes from an aquifer that starts at Carlsville and works its way this way. So you can probably thank the town of Sebastopol for at least trying to enforce the pout's limit uh, to the capacity that it's designed for. But we have to make sure we do that countywide since we know that our groundwater is very uh, fragile uh, in the county. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go back up to the approval of the minutes of the May 24th, 2022 County Board meeting. I have a motion and a second. Is there any changes, additions, deletions? Bob? Yeah. Um, special reports. I'm not sure what the question marks were for, possibly just because you had a name, there was a name misspelled. I know Jill's not here to maybe answer that. I don't know, but my guess is she didn't know how to spell it. <laughs> yeah, it's P E R L M A N. If that's all it was, it's just yeah, it's Perlman P E R L. Okay. 
Okay. Anybody else? But same question. Wait. Thanks. Anybody else? Say by voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next up, county administrator. Sure. So <clears throat> the monthly report is in your packet. Uh, so I can feel any questions for that. Nothing special to report in terms of that. And then obviously our uh, update in terms of our COVID operations, nothing to report of significance this month. So obviously Sue as her last day was last Friday. So we don't have Sue here to give us, a, I guess, a formal monthly update. So I'll be working with Joe in the future in terms of how we're gonna present those updates <clears throat> should they be warranted in the future. So with that, I'll we can continue on. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for Ken? Todd? Yeah. Yeah, good question to speak on what you yeah, I do have a question regarding the COVID response. So back early on um in 2020, I believe it was, we we voted on as a county board um an emergency order and put in place um some tools that allowed the administrator and Sue and others to do things in, in an emergent um case. And I I don't think we ever sunset that. There wasn't a sunset. So my question only is that I do believe it's still in effect. And if if error has that been sunset or has it been voted on to is it no longer in place? It's a no, that's it's no longer in place. We took that down. Officially, yeah, the, the emergency order we, we took that down. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Ken? Dale, um, I'm wondering about the uh, the conference that's happening. I think it's on Friday for broadband. Uh, or Thursday. Thursday night. Yes. Um, um, for anyone, for the uh, for the supervisors. It's really important if we participate in that, if we can, the more we can learn about it, I think the better it is. And I don't know how your response is, but it's it's going to be at the ADRC That's on correct. Thursday night. So for anyone interested, please attend. I did not pay you for that plug, correct? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Six. Todd, can that be tuned into um, electronically? I mean, video? Yes, video? Uh, we did. There is a meeting notice that was published. Okay. Um, again, it's not a formal meeting of the subcommittee, but we do have it both noticed that it's a potential quorum of the board, but I also have a Zoom meeting published for that for people that could attend online as well. Thank you. Okay. Pending business resolutions. Resolution 2022-61, acceptance of Wisconsin Department of Justice pre-booking diversion program grant to the Door County Sheriff's Office. Joel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2022-61, uh, acceptance of a DOJ pre-booking diversion grant uh, for the amount of 155560. It's been an ongoing thing that we received for several years. Uh, if there's any further questions, um, I don't know if the sheriff's in the back or chief deputy could answer any questions or motion second pertaining to. Oh, sorry. No, we did. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Any other discussion or questions? If not, we go to the voter board. Has passed by majority vote of 20 yes, one absent. Resolution 2022 62, approval of the Door County Emergency Services purchase of a used ambulance. Joel. Uh, again, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve real quick. Nope, Dave did. Okay. Uh, resolution 2022 62, approval of an M emergency ambulance. <clears throat> uh, as it is said, uh, we've had some issues with uh, getting one of our uh, existing ones on the remount and there's a backlog of uh, supply chain issues for getting the new one on order and um, we've had some mechanical problems with another one so it was deemed urgent to pursue a, a temporary uh, replacement in the meantime so we uh, Aaron was able to find one and it's already in house I guess so after the fact approval okay any questions And then we'll go to the voter board.
That's passed by a vote of 20 yes, one absent. <coughs> Resolution 2022-63, approval of the WDH, WDHS DMS BCS grant to Door County Health and Human Services Birth to Three program. Um, Nissa? Morning. Um, I'd like to make the motion to approve the resolution number 2022-63, approval of WDHS DMS BCS grant to Door County Health and Human Services Birth to Three program, which um, there's got to be a clerical error because it says program, but program. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions. I can try to answer. Any questions? Alexis? Um, thanks. Uh, Nissa, can you or is there some staff um, that can answer? I, I see that this is a pandemic related um, support grant. Is this something that's been going on though? Is, is the funding for this program something that's typically state funded? This is just additional dollars or um, how, how does this funding fit into the normal operations? We have Joe available to answer that. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nissa. This is a new funding source. It was a grant that we wrote for. It will develop a, a well baby program that will contract out. Be run by a combination of United Way and Family Services, and then we'll look for ongoing funding for it for the future. Okay. Because this birth to three is a program that's been offered. So I'm just trying to understand. How, how is this additional, just you're taking yeah, it so out of Yeah, so this is taxes. additional dollars. It's not actually going into the department to run birth to three. It is a well baby program. So it will allow us to go out and meet with all families with new children um, and oh, do screening you. and try to um, intercede if there are areas where we experience or see some concern. Fantastic, thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Anybody else? We'll go to the voter board. Let's pass a vote of 20 yes, one absent. Resolution 2022-64, approval of the Library Foundation grant to the Door County Library. Nissa. Sorry, I had to unmute myself again. All right, I would like to make the motion to approve resolution number 2022-64, approval of library foundation grant to the Door County Library. Okay, we have a motion. If anyone has any questions, I'll try to answer. Any questions or discussion? Okay, we will go to the voter board. That's passing a vote of 20 yes, one absent. Thank you. Resolution 2022-65, appointment to the county board subunits, i.e. resource planning committee, CCS, CST, coordinating committee, and children's COP, advisory committee. We have a motion and a second, any questions? Not by voice vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 2022-66, amendment to the Door County Administrative Manual, section 2.5, employee compensation, and section employee compensation handbook. Dave Engelbert. Thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-66 with the changes to the compensation manual. I deal primarily with the um, pay to the HR staff for on call and telecommunicators with their um, overtime on a daily basis. Just, just reference for the full county board, we actually did amend this <clears throat> at finance. There was actually three sections and one was removed because we wanted to get some clarification on, I guess, reimbursement for meals. So that'll be coming back next month as part of the amendment. But again, just as uh, Supervisor Engelbert had stated, again, you'll see there's just the two sections that then ended up coming forward. Obviously one was the Health and Human Services for their on-call 
uh, pay for that, but then also the emergency management for the telecommunicator. So I just wanted to clarify, there was a change from admin to finance, and that's why you're seeing two of the three. The third one will be coming back. They both support it. It's just a matter of how we're presenting the wording on it. So just wanted to clarify that. Any questions? We'll go to the water board. Did you die? And Jason Okay, I will mark that. All right, then it's passed in the vote of 20 yes, one absent. Before I present the next resolution. I do want to make a comment about it. Um, this resolution had, has gone, this program has gone to the administrative committee for the last couple of months. Um, it was tied to also the change of summer hours originally that was separated out by the committee. Uh, we looked at it and discussed it. We then tabled it for a month to have further discussion. And at the last admin committee meeting, which was last Tuesday, um, the, it failed on a vote of 4-3. I did have some conversation um, with another supervisor, a couple of supervisors contacted me, some staff contacted me, I thought about it. Uh, this is the first time I have used the chairman's prerogative to bring something back out of committee and place it on the agenda. Uh, Cause I felt after those discussions that it, and the length that it took that we probably needed to have a board wide um, discussion of this. So that's why it's on the agenda uh, as it is, okay? So, Present resolution 22-67, amendment to the Door County Administrative Manual, Administration Manual, new section 7.0, remote work policy. Do we have a motion or a second? All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion or questions, overview? Sure. I can give a, an overview if you don't, if you just take a minute, just give contact. So I did put a memo out. Again, it came forward. So the memo. I apologize for not including in the packet just because of the timing of how it came together, but just to give you some context, let me just, just walk you through. And I think David did a nice job. So I put down for over the past years, probably even longer than that. Um, obviously, uh, Kelly has worked and I've worked with her on, on different ways that we are looking at our workforce and what we do as an organization. So uh, I guess we're always looking at industry trends, what's happening not only within the local area, what's happening with other counties, uh, and just generally across the board. So uh as it relates to i guess our employee i guess options for working we we're looking at really three tools and i have those listed this is the history so we introduced the flex schedules those have been in place about a little over a year uh, that allows the employee to uh, in essence I'll set up an alternative schedule for working it requires the department head approval and also the approval of uh, hr um, again, that's been in place and it has been working well for our workforce. And then I, we have not had any issues in terms of either the hours or performance or anything related to that. And again, each one of these policies can be, I guess, revoked should the employee not perform when they're obviously using these programs. Uh, the second option, obviously, we adopted uh, last month was the modified hours. Again, that was the modified hours or the, the 494. Uh, that's as in place, and we're going through so far for an, a pilot through October 1st. So I guess our first month under the program, we've not had any significant issues, but we'll continue to monitor that, and we'll bring that back to county board in terms of a full performance report. Uh, <clears throat> again, now the other part of the tool was what we're calling the remote, remote work uh, policy. Uh, the policy itself uh, allows a maximum of three days per week. Uh, someone had asked, why do we allowing just a maximum of three days versus more than that? Uh, I guess it was our initial, I guess what I considered, I described as putting our foot in the water in terms of trying to do the remark, remark, work from home policy. I'm going to do that because I'm stumbling on that um, versus just allowing it full time. Again, we thought just based off our situation with COVID, if you remember, we during COVID, we had that 50-50, 50% of the time in the office. 
and we had employees actually going through that cycle where they could work from home, but they also reported back in the office. And when we did that, we saw very good results. So when we put this together, this policy, we felt that the three day limit at this point in time seemed reasonable versus allowing an employee to work full time from home. So again, we're trying to just limit the scope, take a initial step in terms of working with this policy. Uh, the main change with this is that it does require specific requirements for the employee. Again, in COVID, it was more reactionary. Now we have the opportunity to actually plan for it. So the employee has to show that they have the proper office and also equipment and broadband speed to perform the work. It has to be approved by the supervisor in terms of the work that they're doing and how they're going to monitor the work performance. And it does require approval by HR. Again, it only qualifies for employees that are past their introductory period. So we will not hire an employee and say, as part of the hiring process that they're permitted to work from home up front, they still have to come into work and perform their work on site through the introductory period. And should they pass that, then there becomes that opportunity for them to work from home. Uh, again, I put down, we had some of those discuss, uh, discussions that did fail at a 4-3 vote at admin. Um, but again, this gives you the context. From my standpoint, from the administration, we were asked to put together, when it was tabled, to put together some information. So there was actually two things of information that we did put together. One was the map that's included in the memo. It shows you what other counties are have in place. Uh, you can actually see the green are counties that do have some form of work from home. Uh, the red do not, and the yellow are in progress, and we did have some no responses. Likewise, um, <clears throat> on page two of the memo, I also just did an initial high level poll of where we would see how the policy might be used. If you look at it under the three day remote option, there's actually very few uh, that would think that actually use it. Now, does it mean that there's an area that would come back later and potentially use it? Yes, there could be, but this off uh, the initial <laughs> polling of the department heads, this is where they thought employees could have that opportunity. Where we see a greater percent would be the ability to allow employees to work like one day from home to complete their work. Uh, and in many of those areas, just because of the size of the apartments, it only can be done on a rotating basis. But again, I think one of the main hitters is obviously health and human services with the potential of their workforce given their size. Just really quick then, in terms of the <clears throat> fiscal impact, uh, we didn't put down none at this point in time. Obviously, we do recognize though that there is some time that's required from TS to allow them to set up the technology. <clears throat> and let me just talk about that because that's a big part of this. We have technology where if they're working from home, they are actually not working on their, they're using their PC, but they're not working on their PC in terms of storage or materials or anything like that. They're actually coming through and they're using our Citrix. In essence, what they do is they log in and they take over their desktop here at work. So I know there's some questions in terms of HIPAA and some concerns with that. But again, they're working through our secured systems. Likewise, if it is a position that requires either client interactions or items related to that, we actually have our phone system that actually also is remote. So I actually have <clears throat> my cell phone. If I use, it's called Jabber, the technology, but if I use my phone, I'm actually can take over my phone in my office from home or wherever I'm at. So if I call you, I, the individual doesn't even know if I'm sitting at my desk or at home. But again, that's technology we're using. So we're not having the employees use their personal phone lines and for that matter either. So again, that's what requires, I guess, technology services to actually have that portion set up. Uh, but again, but the, a lot of that technology was implemented during COVID and now we have it in terms of our resources that are available for use. So again, from our, just from the administrative standpoint, and why I brought this forward initially was again, we're looking at all of our policies as an organization. We're trying to make sure that we're a, a good, I guess, employer, but also a good organization meeting our clients' needs. And again, this is just from my standpoint, just another tool in the toolbox. Um, I know there was concerns that are all valid in terms of what they're doing, but I guess I also defer back to my department heads to make sure that one, the employees that they're allowing to do it, um, are responsible enough to do it and also that they have the ability to properly track and use the system. So that's giving you context of why we put together the policy and that's why it's here today. Okay, thank you. Questions, discussion? 
Dan? Yes. Uh, at first, first I voted for it on the executive committee. Second, I was a little skeptical about it, but then when I learned that uh, some of the bullet points that Ken just made, but there's going to be three days or less per week is allowed. It's good. A thing that we can reverse. Um, it's uh, another tool in the toolbox, like Ken said, and uh, it's the modern day of people working. I talked to a number of my younger people, and a lot of them have their kids working at home and all kinds of stuff like that. And I, I started thinking, and I said, I wonder what the county board did 50, 60 years ago when they came to them and said, let's give a one week paid vacation. And I can see the old county board members then said, pay someone to go fishing, they can go fishing on the weekends. And that's how the workforce has changed over the years. And this is a new concept. And here it is again. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's a tool in the toolbox, gives us a better chance to recruit people. And uh, I, I, I'm for it. Okay, thank you. Alexis? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate um, Supervisor Osted's um, comments, and I just wanted to add on um, just some caveats to the policy as it's in place. I'm completely supportive of um, treating our employees as professionals that can manage their own workload and manage their own time. And if they can't, that's a support and a supervisor issue. That's not a policy issue, um, in my opinion. This uh, foot in the water, to me, sort of doing it half and half is as i went through it in my um, own work role was not completely efficient or a true evaluation of how effective somebody can be working from home because you have uh, the cost burden of putting this on the staff which again just is it's a burden you might have more people take advantage of this if you're setting them up at home and not as a duplicate station, but as what you would set them up here, set them up at home, it's the same, it's no additional cost. Um, and people having those two stations or having to come in and out, you're just not as effective as if you're fully capable of working from home, have a full setup and can really make that work. It, there's been no problems um, as far as technology goes and that kind of thing. Um, my other more specific comment on the policy, I have, grave concerns about requiring a um, a daily record of work time that identifies the work performed each day to provide the record to the supervisor weekly and can result in discipline or termination. Um, for me, we had that as well early COVID and it's 15 to 20 minutes of your day, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that adds up. And especially there was a previous comment in the policy regarding um, to the effect that they shall not work more than their allotted time at home, which seems reasonable on the surface. But when you're then taking out half an hour to just do a report that the supervisor may or may not even look at. And again, if you're getting your work done or you're not getting your work done, a daily report is not going to help the supervisor evaluate that. So. I appreciate this. I fully support this. I wish we went further, but I think this is a good first step. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Nissa? Uh, thank you. So I can't see the memo that the rest of you can see. So I have maybe half the info. Um, I would like to know why the what the discussion was, why the people who voted no voted no, what some of their reasoning was. Um, because you look at most jobs currently in whether it's especially in the tech industry the majority of them are now remote as an example businesses a lot of them have gone remote for the fact that they no longer have to pay for things like office space electricity things like that so in my eyes three days a week of remote is not that big of a deal especially if your position allows it so if anyone wants to answer why they voted against it, I'd appreciate that. Cause like I said, I can't see the, um, what was put out in person. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Nissa. Joel? Um, my questions have been answered. Todd? Yeah, well, I guess I'll <clears throat> be the first one to say why someone voted no. Um, so a lot of history um, with this topic and, uh, um, you know, 
I'll go, I'll go through some of the reasoning behind what we've uh, discussed in this in this meeting several times. But uh, um, from my perspective, I, I just don't believe that um, county government is a good place to have work from home options. Um, I think uh, this is a privilege. I don't think anyone can deny that uh, work from home isn't because folks wouldn't want to do it if if, uh, if it wasn't if it was it was a penalty. But there's a very small band of people um, in this county that employment that can take advantage of it. Um, of the 300 employees, I don't know that 10% would be able to take advantage of it. I think it would create some strife. I think it would create some internal um, difficulties. And you know, we talked about this at the admin committee. So there's a lot of water that's been over the dam on this. And Joe and others said that's for the supervisors to manage. And I, I guess I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um, look at my notes here so I cover all my comments. So, you know, on, on the research part of it, um, I think, in my opinion, the map that was put out is a little misleading. I asked the question early on about um, whether or not our emergency policy had been revoked, you know, that allowed for work from home under the COVID emergency policy. So technically, you know, had this question have been asked of our county back a month or two or three ago, whenever it was, revo it was revoked, um, our color in Door County would have been green also. So I think my opinion, and I could be wrong, but a lot of the responses that you got to make us feel visually that we are in a minority. A lot of these counties do have it, but it's a hangover, it's a leftover from what they were forced to do from COVID. So when you ask the simple question, do you have, yeah, we have it. We had to put it in place from COVID, it may be left over. So I think that map, in my opinion, is, is a bit misleading. I could be completely wrong, but I've sampled that in some, some cases and that's what I have found to maybe be the case. Um, you know, we talk about tools in the toolbox and, and we've heard it numerous times in the admin committee that, you know, we need tools in the toolbox. We have lots of tools in the toolbox. We really do. And I understand and I get it that um, this is something for retention and, and, you know, maybe this is the way of the future and things of that sort. But, you know, to, to steal the sign that Susie um, donated to, to put up here is that just because we can, you know, it doesn't mean that we should. Um, I think this is a case that is very um, much um, resonating with, with that comment. What I, you know, this this is called a government center. That's the building we're in. And I think I, I tend to look at things from through a public eye and um, from a taxpayer eye. I, I don't necessarily think, I think when people come here, they expect the folks that the county's paying to be at work and available. Yeah, now you may have a job that's not that's not um, public facing. I get it, I understand it. But you're part of the support crew. You're part of the pit crew, call it whatever you'd like. You're part of that crew. And, and I, I don't know, again, call me old fashioned, but I really believe that workplace collaboration, that workplace um, interaction is a very important piece to, to any place, um, you know, any place of employment. I, I'm not exactly sure how this works. I think I might know how it would work if it would pass is that, um, you know, if you're able to um, take three days off, um, if you could set up a schedule, a permanent schedule that allow three days off, or maybe it's one day off, you know, we've already approved a modified work day. Um, so four full days and then half a day, um, you know, you Think we'd have a pretty vacant um, government center on, on Fridays because I would suspect, at least I would, if uh, I were given that option, Friday would be one of the days I would work from home and give me a head start to the camping trip or whatever else it was that I was going to go upon. Now, I'm not, not, that's not a bad thing for the individual, but is it the right thing for the public? Lastly, I guess what I would ask maybe to consider, and, and I, you know, I, I don't know where this vote is going to go. Well, one more thing before I go to that last thing is I think it's important to note and um, from a context perspective, the vote was four to three. Yep, it, it was. But um, I really believe the sentiment in the committee was six to one. Um, it was four to three because a number of committee, a couple of committee members were pretty adamant that this came to the full county board. So therefore the dissenting vote would have been potentially to bring it to the full board, which, which is where we are here now today. And I, I don't, I mean, I, I think David did the right thing in, in bringing, Chairman Lino did the right thing in, in bringing this in, in front of the full board. I had, I have gotten a handful of calls from people within the county department heads and others, which will go unnamed that were appreciative of the position that many of us on that admin committee took in saying that this probably wasn't something that we should do. Now, in the admin committee, when it was tabled, um, I was the one that asked for the tabling and, and we asked for it to be tabled until after we did the review on the nine hour workday. Let, let's, let's get through that. And when we review that in September, let's take a look at how all this works. And maybe we added at that time. And I was convinced to modify my tabling request to have it brought back to the next meeting, um, which we did. And, and again, the vote is what the vote was. 
but um, you know, many department heads um, or many of the people I'd called responded with some sort of difficulty that they felt that this was going to bring to the county. What I'd like to see happen, which I do believe is what's going on here right now, is, is give departmental head discretion. I'm not against a snow day, staying home and you know, you COVID, you're sick. I mean, we all understand that. Don't don't come to work and maybe your computer's at home and, and you work at that pace. And that's the way a lot of industry is. And that's the way a lot of folks do their business here these days. So, but I think putting the faith in our department heads to monitor that, which is some of what's going on here right now. And if you've got kids that are sick or snow is called off, things of that facet. But to set up a policy that deliberately suggests that those within this county employment can sign up, lobby for, or um, take a three-day um, home work at home and a day and a half um, at work, I, I'm, I'm just opposed to that. So that's some of the reasons why I, I voted no, that with some of the discussion that we had in the admin committee, I'm sure that I forgot something that maybe I felt was important, but I think generally, I don't think anyone in the admin committee could disagree with that as being the discussion point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to uh, kind of um, echo what Alexis said. There's been a lot of studies in, in newspapers, business about how much more productive uh, folks are when they're at home. That's just what was one of the pandemic learnings. Another pandemic learning is we are, it is a new normal. Uh, we're full for force flexibility uh, was something that, uh, you know, came to being post pandemic that people started to value more. And uh, it's, uh, I would echo what Alexis said. It, it, if you're more productive at home, why take away that pr productivity to record that you were productive? One of the best things a leader can be to be authentic uh, is to build trust. And I don't really think this is something that builds trust when you say I got to document all those activities. And I would think given the strong leadership that we have within our county departments, um, let's trust our employees as the employees are trusting them to do the right thing um, as part of being a county employee uh, for our citizens. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Vinny? Thank you. I just would like to support this. Um, so some similar comments also is that I, I feel as we see in the survey that was done, not all departments are the same and don't have the same requirements for being public facing or not. And I think the department heads um, know that better than anybody. And I trust what they put down on this paper as far as what departments that may or may not work for or what even is specific employees that are interested in it now, which could change over time. But I think it would change reflecting what's needed most in those departments. So that trust for the department heads, I think, is really important um, and would like to see that supported. And being able to fill positions, especially I know I'm on the Health and Human Services Board, has been really challenging and it's taken a ton of time to do. And it makes it not competitive with other fields and other people hiring in those same positions if they're not able to work from home. So I think to just not want to do it, saying for a county in general, excludes other departments that have a more specific need to be able to hire and retain people. I think those are really important. Um, I also trust department heads again to when we need to have public facing, they will make sure that that happens as it does now and probably even in an enhanced way by specifically knowing when that needs to be where. Um, so I'm 100% for it. And according to this survey, 96 out of 301, that's a third of the staff that would like to utilize that at least one day a week. So I just, that's what this survey says. It's not less than 10%. So thank you. Thank you, Benny. Morgan? I had two points and Vinny actually answered one of my questions. Um, of the of the county employees, about a third would be able to take advantage of this. Like that's the universe of potential. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the other point I wanted to make is there's actually a second part of Sue's quote and it says, just because we don't have to doesn't mean we shouldn't. Um, and I think this really leads in to, it's a needed step in the culture shift. So Sue actually mentioned that in her public comment, um, COVID did open up a lot of thought for people so people learned how people work and where people work and the ways that people are more productive and if we as a county don't have the resources to prioritize being competitive on pay alone these are the things that we need to start looking at is, is adding that extra tool so i don't think people will abuse it i also trust our department heads to be able to monitor it um, and i think it's necessary and I, i'm very much for this i'm happy to see it come through okay thank you anybody else Dale? Yeah, I'm in favor of this uh, of this also. And 
and we have a, um, a feature in here that, that is just going for three months. So we'll have a good feel as to what's happening, if there's any abuse to it, et cetera. So uh, I'm in favor of this. Okay. Thank you. Just, sure, good. just wanted to be for clarification. I'm not sure where you got the three months from. So this we're on the same page. So I, and this is my staff memo. It came for us as the policy for us to adopt. In my memo, I suggested, you know, trying it through the end of the year, and we could give a formal report back to the county board to see if they wanted to extend it. But I just want to make sure whatever we, right now the motion is just to adopt the policy, which means it just be in place. But okay, so I just want to make sure yep. we're all the same thing. I'm still in favor. Okay, okay. thank you, right. David Engelbert. Yes, uh, I, I guess I was one at the admin committee that did not support it either. I, I'm not going to reiterate most of what Mr. Thais, uh said, but I'm in agreement with much of it. And I think that there's several pages here of guidelines and so forth that even Alexis indicated is maybe excessive or not necessary. But I, knowing different businesses, people that worked at home during the COVID and now their employees are requiring, employers are requiring them to go back to work indicates that not everything is, is as smooth as we may think it is. And even these guidelines that we have here talk about remote working employees must respond as soon as possible, but no later than during the same work day to any communications from the supervisor, unless circumstances make it physically impossible to respond. I mean, that raises questions to me of how those employees are responding. They, they need to be in contact with their supervisor anytime. I, I don't see the need for some of these um, guidelines that are in here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Todd? Yeah, just to put it in perspective, um, when I said the 10%, in our admin meeting, um, when we talked about um, how many people will be able to utilize it, I think Joel had said about seven in his organization, and, and we didn't have the benefit of the memo that um, uh, did, that uh, Mr. Pavic has now put out. And um, in, the, in the meeting, we counted that, and, and it was talked about about 30 people would be able to take advantage of that. So that's where the 10% came from, I can do the math and I understand the memo that he's got, so just understand that. Vinny? Um, I was just curious, what's the introductory period length? He said it would be available after that. How long is that for a new employee? Uh, it's traditionally, it's six months, correct, Kelly? So, but they like, upon applying for a job they would be notified that after six months they would have the option to work remote so it still could be a recruiting tool and a seen oh, as a benefit yeah thank you anybody else all right before we go to robert i'll make my comment um at the admin meeting i you know from a basic level of working uh, in the workforce for many, many decades, I initially was opposed to this. But as I sat and thought about it, listened to Joe, listened to some of the other department heads, listened to some of the uh, other options. I also contacted a couple of administrators that were on that map uh, to get their input. Um, it, to me, it became an additional tool. Uh, we've been struggling in many areas of the county in hiring. And if this can help, um, I, I'm for it from that aspect. We're also not saying everybody's going to take three days. The vast majority of people would be doing one day if you look at what the chart actually said. And if I rec recall some of Joe's comments in, in uh, the admin meeting was he said he had up to 70 employees that would take the one day and seven employees that would take the uh, three days. Okay, So the, it, there, there is a significant group uh, in health and human services that would utilize it and um, the department head and the department and the committee, the uh, Health and Human Services Committee feels that that would be appropriate in particular for that department based on what they did through COVID and, and where we're at now going forward. And so I do, I did change my position. Um, so you could say I was six and one, I became one of the three, uh, the four and three uh, as a result of that you know, thought process. After the committee meeting was over, uh, I did talk to a, a couple of supervisors, other uh, department heads, some employees brought it up. And that's when I chose to go ahead and, and use the chairman's prerogative to bring it back because it was so close on the vote. 
uh, everybody was moving kind of position wise. And um, that's where I came from. And that's what, that's what my discussion was at, at the admin committee. So any other questions or comments? Any other discussion? Joe. Yeah, I've been thinking long and hard about this too. And I think my perspective is being a, it's a generational thing for, you know, to a point being in the middle of the road here compared to all of our colleagues around here. But I was reluctant on this myself. And I, I agree with everything that everybody is saying on all sides of the conversation. But at the end of the day, you just said what I was going to say is that if this is one possible potential thing that could be a, a opportunity to entice somebody to come and work for the county and, and be a value i'm supportive of it and that's the one thing that i keep thinking of in my head right now so just on that potential alone i i think it's i'm going to support it and and you're right when it comes down to the end of the day and where the rubber meets the road our department heads and our supervisors are the one that lay the groundwork and the footwork for allowing this to happen and if we don't have trust and faith in those folks then we have nothing so i I'm, i think i'm going to support this and you know, and I would be more inclined to support it more if we could do it as a trial thing through the end of the year. I think that's a caveat that we can maybe get on board with too. So that's an idea maybe, but uh, that would be a sure thing in my support of yes, if, if we did that. Okay. <clears throat> Todd? Well, I'd like to offer an amendment to the resolution to um, put this in place for a period of six months and um at the end of six months there's a fully detailed report as to how it was utilized and, and any complaints or any positives or negatives that uh you know may have came and and then the county board gets a kick at the can one more time and you know maybe between that point in time um you know some of the things david talked about in regard to the requirements that were put in place maybe that are too harsh and alexis spoke about that maybe too harsh that there'd be an opportunity to go back to it so we're not a hiring anybody with the promise that they have remote working opportunities. I mean, you'd have to tell them that it's on a trial basis and um, B, you know, it, it would give it maybe a chance for those like me that have a bit less confidence in this to see what happens and maybe get the generational. And I guess I'm on the side of, of the generation that Joe may be talking about here. <laughs> um, give me a chance to get on board figure out how to start at my computer and work from home <laughs> okay so you're making a formal motion for that amendment i am okay. is there a i, I tried to yeah i just yeah I well tried. no yours did come up oh we just didn't do anything it's still sitting here so i didn't know if i'm supposed to accept yours or <laughs> jeff is my witness I, yeah, it's not working yeah, yeah same here. So, so what do i do with hers so we just need a motion in a second okay so i'm going to get rid of alexis and go to Todd. No. No, e either way, whoever makes the motion in a second. That's the motion. She, she wanted the original motion alone. Oh, right. But I did, I tried to push a motion to amend. So, yeah, I don't see a motion to amend on my thing. And if you can get some way for Todd to be make the motion, I'd take a second. Then I can't push the button either. Can you know? See how technology takes that. You, you just, we're going to work from home. You just, <laughs> did it just come up? For you to amend. Really? So I'm going to ignore yours. Maybe. Okay, I'll, I'll try, try again. Try. Try. Try, try to hit your thing. I think his was there you go. Did it work? I have the floor. It tells me I have the yes. floor. Yes. Yep. There went okay, so it's so on the floor. Okay. So, so, we have a, what is the so we have a motion and a second to amend uh, the resolution for a six month trial period. And to reevaluate at the end of the six month period of time, come back to the county board and decide if it continues after that or if there's amendments to the process. Did I say that correctly? Yep, I couldn't okay. have said any better. <clears throat> okay. I think that's it. <laughs> okay. So if anybody wants to speak that's on the speaker board, you have, you're speaking to the amendment not to the original motion. Okay. Vinny. Thank you. Um, I don't, sorry, Todd, to go back and forth, but I, I don't want to support this amendment because I feel six months is an unrealistic amount of time. To, one, get it all implemented. Two, recruit any staff. We've had open spots for staffing for more than a year in some positions, and that process is a lot of work. 
And so to, it won't be a recruiting tool then because you can't guarantee it. And then the time passes, the months go on of having interviews and hiring someone and it's not available because you can't say it is and then take it back. And I feel it's similar to any increase in pay or flexibility with something. If it's temporary and then taken back, now you have a lot of people that liked re working remote and now they can't. So I think it's not good policy to do it for six months and then consider not doing it. I think we won't have enough information after six months to know to really make a difference. Um, so I'm against the amendment. Thank you. Alexis. Thank you. Um, I want to echo um, Supervisor Shomo as well in that this six month period would be for um, current employees, because even if we did hire somebody tomorrow, the six month um, introductory period would preclude that person from participating in this program. So we have no idea how that that recruitment class would do or how we would. So, and frankly, to put a word to, um, if I may, um, it's disingenuous to just put a six month term on this and then we'll reevaluate. Um, I think this is a recommendation from the staff. It's a recommendation that I've heard and that is successful, has been successful in many models, and um, I will not be supporting this amendment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Morgan? Sure, I want to echo the previous two supervisors. Um, this wouldn't be a tool for recruitment if we didn't, we weren't able to start it until effectively January. Um, we do have positions, especially in public health, that have been open, and we are hemorrhaging people. And like at the end of the day, the people make the county go. Um, so I, I do not want to support the amendment because at the end of those six months and what happens if we retract it and then we lose a whole nother wave of people because they're going to find an equivalent position that they can do remote um second question what would our threshold at the end of december when we reevaluate this what is our threshold for determining if it worked or if it didn't is this just going to be an anecdotal i liked it i didn't like it do we have that plan in place to evaluate thanks thank you nissa morning again so there's a, a saying about once you give something someone something that they enjoy a perk and then you just say haha just kidding we're taking away that usually doesn't end well for the business that is supplying that perk. Um, also when it, I agree with that it's not going to be a selling point when you when a new hire finds out that this is an option for them, but it's going to be reassessed before they hit the point that they could have that option and it's removed from them. Honestly, if that was me and I took a job and I was told I'm going to get this benefit maybe, and then it's removed, I would look at a different job in a different county. So with that, I mean, the amendment, I understand the reasoning, but it's, not going to make it better for potential uh, employees. Thanks. Thanks, Nessa. Ken? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think I look at it a little differently. Uh, all our resolutions are temporary. If we pass any resolution and we find out it doesn't work, we always have the right to come back and say, this isn't working, we're going to change it or, or get rid of it. So I don't see a need to specify it here. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so we will go to the voter board. This is for the amendment. The amendment is to do a trial basis for six months. The amendment has failed on a majority vote of 15 to five and one absent. So that brings us back to the original motion and the original resolution. Any additional comments on the original resolution? Okay. Can you, can you clear this? There we go. Okay. Okay. All right, Alexis. I just wanted to make a quick comment because of this gone over this a lot, but I don't want anybody in the room to think that this is going to solve all of the county's um, recruitment and retention woes. We have a lot of tools in the toolbox. We're getting there. But it's really up to the department heads and the culture and the 
type of work environment that we want to have to in order to recruit and retract retract retain thank you um and our employees so i agree that this is something that we need to do to keep up but this is not i don't want anybody to think this is a silver bullet that's going to solve our problems either so thank you thank you ken thank you mr chairman uh i have two daughters that well i have three but I have two daughters that work from home and they love it. And it's a time saver. It works out fine. And if they were not doing their job, their employer would know it and there would be changes made, but their employers have come to realize that it's beneficial. So uh, that that's my take on it. So I don't have, I, I, I go along with it. I think it's a good idea. All right. Thank you. One last time, anybody else? All right, we'll go to the go ahead. You? Is, are you making a? Mm -hmm. No, we yeah, so like to, to speak. Offer an amendment. Oh. And I would like to uh, amend um, the, the policy to eliminate the reporting requirements uh, for the employee. Thank you. There's a motion and a second in that. Questions or discussion? <clears throat> okay. Oops, sorry. Vinny? I have one quick one. I mean, that feels like it's written into policy, but clearly, if a department head needed to know that, they could just ask the employee that question Correct. and would be expected to answer as a, just a good policy of work. So it wouldn't have to be written as a policy to happen if there was an incident that it needed to happen in. It's just a point I wanted to make. Okay, you? Yes, I agree with that, but I would like to have a start a policy with a presumption of trust. Mm -hmm. I think that's, again, important um, uh, to be good leaders. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, anybody else? Okay, so we're gonna to go to voter board. This is voting on the amendment to remove the uh, employer reporting requirement. <clears throat> That's passed by a majority vote of 12 to seven. So that is amended. So the reporting requirement is removed from the resolution. Okay, now. Yes, okay. Now we'll, now we'll go to the, to the vote on the as amended resolution. Yep. Yep. Okay. Ken. I requested to speak and it either it didn't go through oh, or oh. whatever. Uh, my question is I'm okay with the, the last vote, uh, but I just want clarification. This doesn't mean that the uh, uh, department head cannot check up on a person's performance and what's going on. Yeah. They still have the right to do that. It's just that it's not demanded on a daily basis from the employee. Correct. Okay. That's just so we don't correct. take anything away from the the uh, department head. the power of the department head to see how their 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 department is working. Okay. Now I'm ready to vote. Yeah. <laughs> That's passed by a majority vote of 16 yes, four no, and one absent. Thank you. Do you want to take a break before we finish up, or do you want to power through? All right, let's take a 10-minute break. <laughs>
Sorry. Welcome back. All right, resolution 2022-68, appointment of county conservationist, Door County Soil and Water Conservation Department. Dave Engelbert. Resolution 2022-68 for the director of the conservation department, endorsing Greg Colters. Okay. Ken? Sure. So actually, Greg's here. Uh, pleased that he uh, is willing to accept the position for our county conservationist. Um, I thought I'd just have Greg come up and say a few words for those that may not know him, although he's been here for a long time. <clears throat> Thank you. I'd like to apologize to Mr. Engelbert. I thought because it was soil and water and I was the chairman of the of the committee, oh. I would make the the, the uh, uh, motion. So I apologize, Dave. Uh, I accept your apology. I, appreciate <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> totally prepared to do it as either. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Um, it's good to see a lot of familiar faces here. Um, worked with many of you over the years, some of you in the same department. Um, but for those of you that don't know me, uh, I started here in Door County in February of 1993. So this coming February would be three decades on the head. So um, it's been a pleasure. Um, I've worked with just about every program that we've had in the office. Um, even five years ago, did a little interim uh, department head. Uh, but this time I've, I've decided to go forward with it, especially with the support from our staff. Um, they really encouraged me to, to go for this position. So it's going to be an honor to uh, now lead the department and protecting our resources of Door County. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? If not, by voice vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. No ordinances this month. Any oral committee reports from anybody? Review committee minutes. Review of vouchers, claims, and bills. Announcements. The next county board meeting is Tuesday, July 26th at 9 a.m. The motion to adjourn would be in order. Is there a second? <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>